I have an old friend who watches my videos and sees me making stuff like knives and he's he's had me fix a knife of his already in the past and he gave me this other one it's just an old uh, it's a martini of Finland uh, fishing knife fillet knife and if you look at it more carefully if you look at it a little more carefully it's obviously old he's had it his mother bought it for him when he was 12 or something and what he did was he asked me if I could fix the end of it and turn it into a paring knife or something. It all disassembles easily enough. There's a crack in the handle right there. But the rest of it, the hardware is okay. And uh, he actually asked me, he said, can you uh, fix this blade, reshape it, resharpen it, and then in your forge, could you lengthen the tang so that so that it uh, comes through the bottom again and I can rivet it but instead. I'm pretty sure I have something in my scrap pile that will fit the bill and we can make a new blade and I'll put everything else back together with the original hardware and we'll clean it up and make it pretty and all new looking. But this blade has to go. I'm not going to make a short little crappy knife. I'm going to make a new fillet knife, proper length. So in my pile of crap, scrap, it's not crap, it's scrap. Anyway, here's a handsaw blade. I have a bunch of those because I, I use them, particularly use this kind of blade for work. Anyway, it's about the right thickness. And I think I can just make a new knife out of that. As an arborist, this is my favorite, favorite blade to prune with. They're so nice for cutting wood. And I use them in the shop and stuff too. Anyway, this stuff's made out of SK4 tool steel, which is really good steel, and it's taper ground. So when they're ground, they're actually thinner at the top of the blade and thicker at the base. So when you cut through a live branch because it's soft and smushy because it's green wood, wet wood, it tends to close up on you when you cut. So this cuts a little bigger of a kerf on the bottom and then a thinner, it's thinner at the top so it goes through more easily. Anyway, because of that, um, we would want the top of our knife, the spine of our knife, to be closer to the teeth on this part. Right, because that way it'll taper thinner towards the blade end or towards the sharp point. I've taken the liberty of printing out a, a picture of one of these guys that's in good shape off the internet and it's pretty close in size it's not perfect but it gives me an idea of what the it gives me an idea of what the blade looks like anyway now we want the thick spine of the knife to be on the thicker part of the saw blade there hopefully let's take it off and see Yes, there's our profile. That's the basic profile. It's not easy to see, but I got my profile. So. With lots of extra. Ooh. I think that's good for the moment. We can work on the handle and then if we like the way the handle turned out, then uh, finish the knife. So that's whalebone. I just drilled a hole through it. I'm going to cut that. I'm just going to cut that piece out and make a little uh, cap, like a bead, for the end of this.
hopefully that fits. Yeah. Okay. We'll just clean up this handle a bit. I think I'm just gonna not worry about the crack. I have shellac. Then I'm gonna put some uh, linseed oil in there with it. Mix it together a little. Got a decent matte finish to it. So now I'm just going to assemble it with two part epoxy. Get some in here. Oh well. It's not ideal. I predict that that's going to lock severely into place. There it is. Got a good flex, bounces back. I was careful not to overheat it while I was grinding it. It's gotta be worth at least 20 bucks, like a brand new one costs.